Good morning. It's Friday, February 17th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, It Was By Faith. And our scripture is Hebrews chapter 11, where the Apostle Paul writes, It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It's a whole lot easier to entertain faith from an easy chair or from a pew in the sanctuary. It's in those safe places faith seems workable. It's in protected comfort we plan how to live by faith, how to work, and we plot our course to build a life of fellowship with God, to be a good person. We can see it all laid out in our minds. We even jot it down in a journal. We can see a future that makes sense. And that's just the problem. We see it. Seeing is not faith. Acting on a promise without having the end and how it will all work is trusting. And trusting without seeing is the heart and soul of faith. If you require knowing the beginning point, the end, and all the steps you'll take in between, perfectly laid out, charted with PowerPoint displays and checklists, you're no closer to faith than an iceberg surviving in the fiery furnace. But what if you're bent that way? What if you're an introverted thinker, one who makes to-do lists and wants to plan the work and work the plan? Are you irrevocably doomed to the abyss? (laughs) Well, I'm that sort of person. Welcome to my world. According to Jesus, looking ahead to count the cost isn't wrong. In fact, it's an integral part of the process if you want to be his disciple, according to Luke chapter 14. So, where does counting the cost end and faith begin? When do you stop contemplating God and his call on your life and begin cooperating with Jesus in whatever he puts in front of you? Or do you just totally put aside thinking and just begin doing? Well, those are some good questions, but looking for a timetable for thinking and doing evades the trust issue of faith, and trust is the key. Remember Moses. He had plenty of time for thinking about God and searching for God's will. Growing up in a palace, power at his fingertips, this Jewish boy hiding in Egyptian clothing had a heart that was on fire for God. Every choice he made was pointed towards worshiping Almighty God. He never rejected meditating on God or making plans. I mean, just look at the plans for the wilderness tabernacle. But he was always ready, without a moment's notice, to step out into the uncharted waters of change. He did count the cost, and he found out early that he would make mistakes, like killing an Egyptian soldier and having to spend the next 40 years on the backside of nowhere. But he also knew an unconditional heart's commitment to God's ways. To the casual observer, every decision Moses made was toward the downward spiral. Exile, hardship, poverty, the anger of Pharaoh instead of power, luxury, and fame. That was his counting the cost. And walking by faith in the God who called him was always his choice. For you today, when you serve the King of Kings, walking by faith needs no other vision. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.